Hello, I'm Jake, and it's my last alliance against my brother's army of Thor in a thousand points of Middle Earth strategy battle game. We're going to be using the same armies that we'll be taking to Throne of Schools this weekend. If you want to find out how we do at that tournament, make sure you subscribe. But for now, let's get on with the battle. Aaron's brought a pure army of Thrallists that's 50 models in all. All but one of them are defence 7 or higher, so it's going to be a tough nut to crack and they don't lack any hitting power of their own. Thrall's his army leader and is their biggest threat as far as I'm concerned. He's got a 6 inch banner and can hang around the back of his line. If things do go badly for him, he's also got the Arkenstone which could in theory give him an unlimited number of wounds. Thrain and Thorin provide the muscle. Thrain's battlefield wide standfast will be particularly useful in an objective game, as being broken won't dictate where his heroes have to be. Dwalin's a glass cannon and is the first model I'll be looking to shut down. He's also got the Captain of Erebor who's there for the heroic march. It was a toss up between him and Barlin for his final Throne of Schools list. In the end he's gone with the Captain, we'll see how he performs today. So in all he's got 50 models, 26 dead to be broken, no bows but 23 throwing axes. Lots of powerful heroes, high numbers, high defence, two banners. It's a great army, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to take it down. I'll be taking the last alliance today. It's got all my favourite good heroes in it. Gilglad will be my army leader. He's only got one fate, but he's defence 8 and he's got a fight value of 9 with the Lord of the West reroll. I'm not expecting him to lose any combats and that'll be his best form of defence. In the end game, he's got the Blood and Glory rules, which hopefully will have killed a hero or two so he'll be able to get some might back. He's also got a 12 inch standfast, which will let me spread for objectives. Elendil's the centrepiece of the army. His free heroic combat is going to be key to moving my models around the board. I need to be careful to not let him get isolated, but I'm hoping he's going to be cutting dwarves down like they're goblins. The sealed door doesn't have the ring as Elendil's in the army, but his fight 6 3 attacks is nothing to be sniffed at. I'm hoping he'll be able to ghost in and get a few kills that way, as Aaron's probably going to be focused on my bigger heroes. The captain of Numenor is here for some expendable might. If I can spend the captain's might instead of Elendil's or Gilgalad's, That'll be a win for me. It's a really fun army to play. I've got low numbers but excellent heroes and lots of high fight value throughout. Let's find out what the scenario is. So today we'll be fighting over this Rohan village where snow can only settle on the floor and not on the roofs of the houses. And the scenario is capture and control. There's going to be five objectives set out, three across the middle line of the board and one in each of our deployment zones. Each objective is worth two points, and then we're going to get a point for breaking the opponent and a point for wounding their enemy leader. Nice and simple, the objective game should benefit my army, although Aaron's got an awful lot of dwarves. We rolled for deployment and I took the west table edge. We then took turns deploying one warband at a time. I'm hoping I'll be able to get over the halfway line, tag all the objectives my side and then he won't be able to break through past me. Um, I'll try and keep Elendil and Gilgard together, hopefully with him not having any archers. They'll stay on the horses and I'll be able to kind of heroic combat around one flank and hopefully take a few heroes out that way. I think the key is get in front of the objectives as soon as I can uh, and then make him kill through the dwarves which are all defence 7, which will be very difficult even for Gilgalad and Elendil. So at the end of deployment, my lone Numenor captain is facing off against young Thorin and a load of dwarves on the right of my deployment zone. In the centre of my line I've paired up Gilgalad and a sealed door, but kept them behind my troops so that they can get the charge when they want to. Aaron positioned Thor and his warband right in the centre of his battle line to make the most of his banner. His Erebor captain was positioned on the flank so if he wants to he could heroic march around the back of my line to get to my objective. And on the left of my line Elendil faces off against young Dwalin along with a few Numenor archers. I don't expect the archers to last long but I'm imagining that Elendil will be able to mince through most of that line. With us both deploying right along the centre line, the first turn's priority is going to be essential. Okay, so we've just deployed. Aaron has got a significantly longer battle line than me, and it's got a lot more models in it. Wasn't quite expecting there to be so many dwarves. I'm hoping my heroes can do the work. If not, I'm stuffed. So we forgot to press record, but turn 1 priority went to the dwarves. This means he'll be able to advance over the central objectives and make the most of his throne axes. I'm going to call her it move, and I'm going to call it... Oh no, <laughs> it's the wheels are off! <laughs> With... Isildur. 
You can't the bullet with anybody? Okay. Yeah, I'll count the bullet with them. Um, okay, you on priority. So, for the whole game, you're going to be evil. Yes. That'll be good. One, two, three, it's me. So, dwarves win. Dwarves win. Unsurprisingly, Aaron advanced over the centre line with his dwarves, pretty confident that I wouldn't be able to break through his high defence and high numbers. Isildur didn't call her with me on his heroic move. It meant that my line at the top would have got completely swamped if he had of. Instead, he just got swamped. He got jumped by Thrain and, and a few other dwarves, but he has got the charge. My Numenor captain in the south had just abandoned the objective down there, and hopefully he'll stay a few turns ahead of Thorin now, who will be out of the action for a little while but obviously that's going to cost me two victory points in the long run. Annoyingly, or cleverly, depending on uh, who you're rooting for, Aaron put two dwarves just out of combat with Elendil and Isildur. This meant that if Elendil's heroic combat came off, he wouldn't actually be able to help Isildur in any meaningful way. And straight onto the combat phase, because neither of us have any shooting. I'll call a heroic combat with Elendil, 3-1. And I will go for the heroic strike. Okay. I'll hurt where it strike with Isildur against Thrain. Elendil started the combat phase pretty strongly for me. He killed two dwarves and then moved into two more. And then it was on to Dwalin versus two Numenor archers. First. Yeah. Oh, he's ordered three with Dwalin, two Numenor bowmen. Get three. three. I win. I get three attacks. Uh, strength five, defense. Uh, f four. Fours. Fours. My last two Numenor archers died to Grim Hammers, and things are already starting to go down the toilet for the last alliance. On to the big combat for the turn, and it's a sealed door versus Thrain and five dwarves. Thrain's fight value is eight. Ooh, the sealed door's fight value. Nine. Nine. And I charged. Yeah. Trains the white dice. That's a four. A sealed door. Come on, a sealed door. Gets a six. So he's knocked them all over. What's it? Thrain's defense? Eight. I'm going to use the first two of my attacks, so four dice, on um, its sixes. Okay, I've got okay. one point of might left on that five. I'm going to use another attack on him. And. Uh, so I've only done one wound and I've only got one might left. I'll go for another attack on him. One wound. Uh, I'll leave it at one wound. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave them on there. I'm just happy that a sealed or survived that, to be honest. The wound's a bonus. My heroes are performing well, but then my warriors kind of reverted to type. I lost three elves, one Kingsguard, and a Numenorian for a return of no dwarves. To top it all off, Gilgalad lost single combat to a Grimhammer who luckily didn't kill his horse. End of turn one. Dwarves have killed 11 models. I didn't kill a single dwarf except for with Elendil who killed four. Not going well. So at the end of turn one, it's 6-2 to Aaron and his dwarves. He's got all the central objectives and he hasn't quite made it to his own back objective yet, so expect that six to turn into an eight. He's also only nine models off breaking me. Not going well for the last alliance. So on to priority for turn two. Two. Three. Uh, Actually, it's two. a ringer during to reroll priority. Yep. Five. I'll call it, and I'll call it with Ellen Neal. Okay, I will counter call with Thrain. Uh, so it's a roll off. I have priority. So one, two, or three, it's me. It's me. So I was very unlucky there, but the Ring of Durin really proved its worth. The dwarves piled forward, charging into everything, including Elendil, to shut down my own heroic move. I managed to hold my flank against a house to the south of my line, but if it went anything like the first turn, it wouldn't last long. By the time he'd finished moving, I'd lost one dwarf to a throwing axe and then only had three models left myself to move. I charged the two Rivendell knights in, but the Numenor captain was still a turn away from combat. I'll hurt combat with Elendil. 
Uh, I'm going to direct combat with this captain. Oh. Uh, I will heroic strike with the seal though. Uh, I'll heroic strike with the silver. No. Nope. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I'm going to heroic combat with Wal. And I'll heroic combat with Gilbert in case Dwalin comes over this way. Hello and welcome to my Monday Night Football Studio. I thought I'd highlight a tactic or two from every game that new players might find useful or that experienced players might find interesting. Aaron's done something quite unique here by calling a heroic combat with both Dwalin and the Erebor captain. It's not for the reason you're thinking. Let's find out what he's planning. So Dwalin wants to charge Elendil when he doesn't have the charge bonus. He could wrap round this side, but then Gilgalad can reach him. So what needs to happen is that Elendil needs to push these dwarves back and then Dwalin can charge in first. So for that to happen, Elendil's heroic combat needs to go off before Dwalin's. So what does he do? He calls heroic combat with the captain way at the back over there. That means if Aaron wins the roll off, the captain of Erebor can go first and then it will either be Gilgalad who will be able to hurt combat but not reach Dwalin, or Elendil, who will push the dwarves back and create room for Dwalin to go into. Or I will win the roll off and Gilgalad will go first, or Elendil will go first, and then Dwalin will go. Perfect scenario for Aaron, he's set it up quite well. Let's see how it pans out. Yeah. So You're first on the hurt combat. Four heroic combats in one turn. Let the slaughter commence, I hear you cry. Well, no. The captain of Erebor lost in a single combat to a king's guard who was cowering behind his shield. Elendil managed to win his duel, but then fluffed all three of his wounding dice. And next, it's Dwalin. So how did it go? Well, he lost single combat to an elf bowman. But next up was Gilglad, and surely he'll be able to kill something. Just lost a roll-off with Gilglad and a charging Rivendell Knight to one Grimhammer. I'm going to use a second point of might this turn. He's not dead yet. Oh, <laughs> okay. Gilglad roll into wound, needing fives. Gets a four. The knight that's charged. Oh, but Gilglad has been knocked over by the knight, so that Gilglad's oh, rolling again. Gilglad. Gilglad's not done it. And then the uh, the knight that's charged needs sixes on four dice. Dead. Just got thank you. Got he needs fives. Need fives. Yeah. Gilglad charged into two more dwarves, whilst the Rivendell knights pushed forward to try and create an opening to throw. The rest of the combat saw Gilglad and the knights kill five dwarves, whilst Thor and his friends killed four elves and two Numenorians. Isildur and Thrain met for another showdown. We forgot to move the camera, so it's the, uh, the dot in the distance at the back there. But both struck to fight value 10, and the roll-off went the word the dwarves. Facing 12 attacks, including Thrain's two-handed hammer, Isildur only suffered two wounds and lives to fight another day. Hi, Phil. I'm already broken. Are you talking about yourself? <laughs> At the end of turn two, the dwarves have a commanding 9 2 lead. The last alliance are indeed broken, and Aaron controls four of the five objectives. It's a long way back, but I'm not giving up yet. Turn three. Three. Two. Okay. I'm calling her move with Good Web. I'll counter call with Dwellin. Roll off finally went my way, and this had extra significance. Because my army was broken, it meant that Gilgalad's standfast would activate, and my warriors wouldn't flee the table this turn. It also allowed me to group my heroes together, hoping to use Elendil's heroic combat as a springboard for my heroes to get around. My line was swamped, but with nearly 600 points of heroes on the table, that was always going to be the case. At the end of the move, Aaron has a firm grip on the objective on his side of the board, and the one to the right of my deployment. The central and left objectives are up for grabs and I'm hoping to make a push for them at the end of the turn. The odds are still very much against me, but having one priority I've been able to pick my combats. Elendil and Gilglad are both fighting Dwalin, and I've got a master plan. So, I'm going to call a heroic, free heroic combat with Elendil. Thor is going to heroic combat, as is Thorin. So Thor, Thorin, Elendil, I'm actually going to call and gamble and call a heroic combat with my captain as well. In the middle. Okay. Okay, roll off to see who goes first on the hurt combat. Did I have priority? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he first. Uh, so I've won the hurt combat off. Thorin's called it over here, Thrall's called it here. I'm gonna do Ellen Deal's heroic combat first with the plan that if I can kill Dwalin, I can get one of Ellen Deal or Gilglad into Thrain and one of Ellen Deal or Gilglad into Thrall. I might get 
point for killing the leader there and hopefully leave one of them near some of these back objectives. Gilglad gets a six. Massive. Okay. Gilglad is the one that needs to kill him and you have two fate, plus one to wound, needing fives, need four fives to kill him. So first slot, no, nope. Lord of the West. Okay, he's my Lord of the West. <laughs> Uh, what strength is he? Four. four. Plus one to wound. Five. Four. Fours. What, how many more fours? Two, two fours. Oh, so I've done two wounds. Two wounds. Three, four, five wounds. Oh. Gilglad has a point and might back. <laughs> As planned, Elendil charged into Thrall, whilst Gilglad charged into Thrain. We began with Elendil's combat. If he could wound Thrall, I'd get a victory point. <laughs> Six. Get Elendil then needs a six. Gets a five, I've got a banner and I've got my banner. Gets a one, I'll point on my that. So Thor is on the floor. <laughs> uh, Thor on the floor, needing fives. There we go. One, two, three. Do I see your fate first or decide my might first? Uh, we're well, dead, so I need to do my fate. That's true. Past and he doesn't lose his fate. And he doesn't lose his fight point. We will be Ellen Neal's last point of might <coughs> for a victory point. I'm gonna use the point of might. Okay. Fight. Doesn't lose his fight point. Take two of those wounds away. What? Got, well, I can keep fighting it. Oh! Doesn't lose his fight. Use a point of might. He's not wounded, but he has lost his fight. <laughs> no. Holy crap! <laughs> Okay. Six. Okay, Gilglad. Six. Okay, Thrain's defence. Eight. So it's five to get plus one to wound. Seven. He's knocked over. Here we go. Need Eight. fives. Oh, that's two wounds, and he got a point of might back, so I could spend three wounds, but I'll roll them again. It's three wounds. Yeah, Thrain's dead. Thrain is dead. It's another point of might back for Gilglad. The rest of the combat saw Thorin fluff his dice for his heroic combat, four last alliance warriors died, and four dwarves died. Uh, does the game end on a one or two? No, no, it carries on. End of turn three, and the scores are still as they were, with Aaron having a massive lead. Thor got very lucky with Arkenstone, saving him three wounds, but now he doesn't have his fate anymore, so he should be vulnerable to a charge from Elendil. I'm nearing some of the objectives, but ultimately, if the game were to end that turn, I would have lost. Big time. Okay, priority. Two eyes. I'm going to call it with this captain here. Okay, let's call it, sorry. Okay. Come on, captain. One, two or three, it's me. Thor gets up from the floor and charges Elendil. It might be his only chance to bring the King of Numenor down. It's a risky move though, having just lost his fate. Thorin and the Erebor captain charge a Rivendell knight. He's unable to cancel my heroic move, so I counter charge where I can. I will call a free heroic combat with Ellen Deal. On Thrall. On Thrall and another guy next Yeah, even though I can't physically kill. Uh, I'm going to call a heroic strike with Thorin. So you got a heroic strike with Thorin. Um, I won't call anything. And I'm going to call a heroic combat with my captain. Combat with the captain, so he's clearly planning to wrap into Gilglad, who I'm going to hurt combat out the way to try and get the back objective over there. Um, but roll off for which hurt combat? Roll off for the hurt combat. See, the first one to three, it's me. Jake. Me. Who do you want to do first? Gilglad. Okay. I'm going to shield. Six. One Gilglad. Six. So it's fives on each of them. Uh, first one, no wound. Second one, no sorry, first one again. Um, no wound. And again, one, one there, and then I've got next one. Oh, Lord of the West. Oh, I've not killed him. You had a four in there. I've you killed the guy that's on the objective. Not the yeah. guy that's not on the objective. <laughs> <laughs> Thorin's fight value against the elf? Nine. Nine, same as Gilgalad. Same as Gilgalad. Um, sorry. Black dice are Thorin, white dice are. Yep. No, you shield and Aaron, I'll, I'll attack, but I'll just, okay. just see. Six. 
Tá, né? Tá, né? Bom. Já vai, tá. Ok. Ok, vamos para o objetivo. Você está tentando ganhar 12 nil. Sim. Arrogance. Então é Thor vs Elendil. Thor tem a charge e nenhum tem mais de might, mas se eu puder wound Thor, eu posso conseguir um ponto de vitória. Ok. Thor é o Black Knight, o White Knight. Elendil tem 200, obviamente. É 4, mas eu tenho a banner. Eu vou. Elendale needing three, no, needing fives against Thor. I'll put all three attacks into him because he's got his uh, face. He's surrounded, actually. In that case, I'll put two attacks into him because he's surrounded. One wound. You taking fate? No, I'm okay. Oh, you used it? Yeah. Oh. So that's one wound, and then the last attack. Two oh. more wounds, Thor's dead. Thor's dead. <laughs> I lost a Rivendell Knight and an Elf Archer that was making his way to an objective, but the loss of Thor's banner was starting to take its toll. Aaron lost five dwarves, including three cut down by a sealed door on his own. Final combat of the turn sees Gilglad facing off against Thorin, who is still at fight nine. I'm just setting with a shield with the Oaken Shield, and then I combat him back with the one strength four hit. Which traps, you're not going to kill him with two hits. I just need to wound him. I'll take the leader point, point rather than take the, the objective point. And then, no, I'm going to go in swinging. Yeah, going for it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you I charged? charged. Ooh, he's going to go five. How many might go left? One. This is in fact a lie. Thorin's already used three might already, but due to our poor record keeping, he now has four might. I got six. I'll tie that. Tie it. Take ten. Two roll off. We've both got Elven Blades. Uh, or Orcus. Orcus. Justice is done. Do I attack the horse? No, I've got to attack it. It's your call. No wounds. No wounds. Strength four. Six. Yeah, six. Okay. Or the dwarf. Does the game end? Oh, does the game end? No. No. Fifteen over. No, you've got seventeen over here. How many got there? One, two, three, four, five, six. So you're twenty-three. Twenty-three. So you're not breaking it. It's twenty-six to break you, isn't it? Killing Thor was a massive result last turn. Not only is it a victory point in the bag, but it's also the end of his banner, which was proving a massive nuisance. Thorin trying to kill Gilglad and failing to wound instead of just killing his horse is also very helpful. Aaron's played a very good game to this point, but the tide is started to turn. How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, no, I'm okay. I am still think I'm probably ahead of the game. He could take some objectives, now he's got some heroes free, but I'm not overly worried. As long as the game doesn't end. I'm feeling confident. I yeah, just don't I want the, the game, game to end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two more turns and I'm in. Priority. And I need to win priority for one. Three. Three. It's one. <laughs> okay. I will call a heroic move with Gilgard in the hope that it will stop. It'll allow my stand fast to go off and keep my army there. Okay. Oh, you're going to use Thorin's last point. For some reason, I'm offering Aaron to use a fifth point of might with Thorin. Might that's your last chance to heroic strike against Gilgalad. Or you might win the roll of course. Uh, no, I'm not going to. You're gonna let me do it? No, I'll do it. Yeah, Mom. Gilgalad charges into Thorin, and the Erebor captain takes the objective on my side of the board. Yeah. I'll pull a free heroic combat with Elm. Ooh. Uh, I will heroic strike with Thorin. And there it is, the fifth point of might from Thorin. Uh, so we do Ellen Dills first. Yeah, and I'd like to see where he can get. Oh! <laughs> uh, I'm going to shield. Six. Ellen Dills, I charged in there. Six. Mm. Okay, so it's fours. Yep. 25, 27. One dead. And then four dice, and I'm needing a four. Dead. Okay. <laughs> I think Gilgal will kill Thorin anyway. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go for these two guys that are near the objective. So next turn I can jump his captain. I'll hopefully stay out of six inches of him if I go the other side, but still within ten of the objective. Uh, so he's literally just going to go into these guys and hopefully 
If Gilgod wins the strike, you'll do his job. Before Gilgod and Thorin face off again, Elendil, Sildor and the rest of the Last Alliance warriors kill five dwarves for no casualties in return. Okay, okay big one. Five. Thorin, nine, nine, same fight value. Strike again. I charged, didn't I? Five. You got no might? No. There we go. Uh, no, I charged. No, I charged. No, you charged. I charged, yes. I called her out. Yeah. You let me do it. Five, six. Done it on a six. Yeah, double. Okay, Thorin's knocked over. You're needing um, fives. Fives. You've got three wounds, three foot. Yeah. I've got a Lord of the West as well. One wound is not good enough. Two wounds is not good enough, but it'll help. Two fates. Both fail. Ooh. All Failed fates. all one three fates. Aaron managed to take the objective on my side of the board, but the middle and south objectives both turned neutral. I desperately don't want the game to end yet. Does the game end? Does the game end? No. What was it? Bye. Oh. oh. How are you feeling? Yeah, yeah, I'm a little bit twitchy. <laughs> yeah, no, I can win this. This is it. I need one more turn. So my score's actually gone down because the captain of Erebor's taken the objective on my side of the board, but I did manage to put a couple of wounds on Thorin and I have broken his army. I am making a push of it, but I'm worried it's too little, too late. Priority. You're broken now as well, aren't you? Yeah. Two. Four! Four. Last Alliance gets priority for the first time in the game! Okay. And there's no might on the table. No. Okay, so the plan here is tag Thorin and then hope everybody else runs. I attacked Thorin in the centre of the board with Elendil and Gilgalad, hoping to use him as a springboard from Elendil's heroic combat, but Elendil then got tagged by a dwarf warrior. It's captain on captain on the objective on my side of the board, and on the opposite side of the board, a sealed door has been charged by a dwarf warrior who's moved off an objective to surround him. Elendil made light work of the dwarf that countercharged him and moves immediately into combat with Thorin and Gilgalad. Use the open shield with five. And I'm just getting it. Five. You've only got five. Gilgalad gets a six. six. Oh. Gilgalad wants the might back, so Gilgalad's going to attack him first. With eight dice, needing fives. He dead. He's got one dice. He's dead. That's, that's winning. Like, yeah, last oh, one. Oh, wow. Ooh. Six. Six, right. I get to do the roll off. Yeah. Four plus it's me. Here we go. Hey. <laughs> it's a three. <laughs> And you shielded to yeah. An elf near the central objective died whilst a Sealdor killed his sixth model in two turns. Dad! Oh. A Sealdor pulling his way. We need the game to not end. Yeah, if the game doesn't end, it's here, a massive win to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. If it doesn't end. I think mind. if it doesn't win, you can win this. Yeah, okay, here we go. Oh, it carries on again. At this point, I'm very lucky that the game hasn't ended. I need to flip two of Aaron's objectives whilst protecting my own and make sure that he doesn't wound Gilgrad. Priority. One. Six. I'm getting it when I need it now. I tried to spread my army out as much as possible and as quickly as possible before the game ends. I lose an Numenorian to courage checks and Aaron tags all the objectives that he can. I was not giving up on this easily. He's positioned his warriors with half their bases hanging off the objectives so that if I'm pushed back, I'm not actually touching it to turn it neutral or where he can, he's left a spearman still touching it so if he's pushed back, he's still contesting it. Okay, I'm going to call a heroic combat with Ellen Neal. I'm also going to call heroic combat with Gilglad. That's his might that he got back for killing Thorin. Yeah, he's out of might. Ellen Neal first. Yeah, I'm going to shield. He gets a five. Oh, you got a three. Needing fours. First guy, dead. Second guy, dead. And then... He's gonna go... Join in the captain. Banner is the black dice on minus six. one. Oh, six on go glad. Uh, dead. A banner will go in the middle of these, touching that objective, and he's gonna not loop round, he's just gonna and charge him. Front. Shield, dwarf, just That's him. fine. All the warriors for both sides failed to kill, but Gilglad did slay his opponent. Elendil gets five. 
Just Ellendale, his fives. And again, so he's got one wound, two wounds, and then the captain <laughs> also needs fives. Three wounds, he's dead. Nice defense eight. A lance on the chart. Oh, yeah, lance, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's a moment 6-3 to me, so the first time the game I'm ahead. Does the game end? Can you roll it? Yeah. Nope. No. So I'm in a commanding position on the battlefield, and now I'm finally ahead on the scoreboard. Aaron's got a few tricks left up his sleeves though, and he's not going to let this go without a fight. Priority. Three. Four. Four. They're going to go into there. He's gonna touch that, which is annoying. <laughs> Curry comes into the back of those two. This guy is important. Curry check. Goes. Goes. <laughs> got three dwarves there. It's five dwarves there. No one knows what's fine. I'm just gonna stop that you attack him. There yeah, that'll do. The front dwarf stays. Curry check. The spear dwarf stays. I'll do it for a combat. <laughs> Shield then. Six. Gets a four. Elendil's got a four. The captain gets a four. Push him back. Oh no. Push him back. Oh, oh no, sorry, it's your, you've got priorities. Yeah, I'm going to attack everywhere. Okay. So I'll do this one. Three. No. Oh. Yeah, I'll, oh, you want to do the banner ones? Yeah, yeah, banner I'll attack there. Two. Six. Dead. Uh oh. No, this is a mistake. <laughs> it's healed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll attack. Six. Five. Where are you now? What are you going to go for? I'm going to kill his horse. Dead horse. Uh, sorry, I'm ready. Did I just lose all those combats? Five is fine. Uh, the banner. Yeah, I'll shield. I'm not wasting Four. my banner. <laughs> oh. Banner reroll. Oh. Oh, hey! Uh, <laughs> so that's that's now yours. That one's mine, which that it shows. wasn't. Yeah. Does the game end? Okay, I roll, there we go. It no. doesn't end. So that was a truly terrible turn for me, Ellendil and the captain being beaten back off the objective on my side of the board, and I lost quite a few models in the middle and to courage checks. It's all about this next priority roll. If I win, I'll win the game. If Aaron wins it, he could win the game. So at the moment, it's 8-5 to me. This objective in the middle, if you pull the camera in, <laughs> is mine. If Aaron wins priority, he'll be able to tag a sealed door and tag the banner, because foolishly I attacked with these guys, and then get a guy to flip that. Because Ellen Deal fluffed it her at combat and should be back up this end murdering those guys. Not panned out. So, massive priority roll. There we go. One. Six. Okay. Uh, your priority. Your move. My priority. I'll throw it combo over here. Shielding. Six. Ellen Deal. Four. Not again. Captain needs a six. Six. That Eight. surely Four. is that now. Ellen Deal kills him. Captain is going to stay there and flip that. I'm not going to forget that. He's just going to kill the guy here. Dead. Dead. And does the game end? One or two ends. Ends. Yeah. Done. Oops. I think we went to shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> so it's finished 8 3 to my last alliance. I'm feeling pretty lucky as I was down and out for large portions of that, but my uh, heroes really came good in the end. Let's see how Aaron's feeling. So you've lost the game, but you were winning until kind of. Well, basically until that heroic move, heroic combat against Dwalin. Um, but how, how are you feeling? <laughs> um, yeah, fine. Because I, I was still winning after that. It just, the game turned, if the game had have ended two or three turns sooner, um, I'd have won. Statistically, the game should have ended while I was winning. Yeah. So it's just, it's unfortunate. Um, I won a few roll-offs at the start of the game, um, which then meant that actually the dwelling won. Well, it looked 50 50 and was very key. I won a couple of key roll offs earlier. I was pleased with how my dwarves played. Um, how, how are you feeling going into Throne of Schools? Are you going to change your army, Balin, or, or leave it as is? No, I did like that I didn't use the heroic move from the captain, uh, heroic march that the captain gives me, and actually the reroll on the priority was pretty key when I used it with Thraw, and Balin would give me that option, but I think on the balance of it, the 
periodic march will be more useful later. And is there anything you think you could have done against my heroes who were all still alive at the end of the game and obviously kind of turned it at the end then? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, not really. Um, no, I went for them when I had the opportunity to. Good game overall? Yeah, very good game. Enjoyable. Yeah. 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 Good. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, I was down oh, yeah. and out. Well done. <laughs> I was... <laughs> Bravo! What a player. <laughs> I was down and out at one point there, and then the, the key hero combat with uh, Ellen Deal and Gilgad, it swung the game. Um, getting in against Dwalin and then looping around onto Thrain and potentially, well, taking a few wounds off Thor or all this threat, I can't remember. Uh, and then from there, the heroes were just too powerful for everything I'd left, they had nothing to deal with it. And as Aaron just said, um, he never managed to quite reach the 10 on the fight value for the heroic strike. Got lucky, great game. I think I'll keep the same army for Throne of Schools. We'll find out in the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed that, if you did, please do subscribe. Um, I'll have a tournament review coming up soon of Throne of Schools. It's going to be myself and my two brothers going. We'll have the Last Alliance, the Army of Thwart, and then a founding of Rohanlist with Earl and his riders. I will talk through our display boards, the armies we chose, why we chose them, and ultimately what games we won and who finished higher out of the three of us. I'll give you a hint. The tournament hasn't happened yet, but it's not going to be anywhere near the top. That's all for now. Hopefully we'll see you again soon.